Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Saturday, April 17th, 2021. What a joy it truly is to be able to spend this time together with you in God's word, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. We begin today by reading a portion of Psalm 106. In the camp, they were envious of Moses and of Aaron, the Lord's Holy One. The earth opened up and swallowed Dathan. It covered the assembly of Abiram. Fire blazed throughout their assembly. Flames consumed the wicked. At Horeb, they made a calf and worshiped the cast metal image. They exchanged their glory for the image of a grass-eating ox. They forgot God, their savior, who did great things in Egypt, wondrous works in the land of Ham, awe-inspiring acts at the Red Sea. So he said he would have destroyed them if Moses, his chosen one, had not stood before him in the breach to turn his wrath away from destroying them. Our Old Testament reading is the account of one of those events that was referenced in our psalm, Israel's unfaithfulness with the golden calf at Mount Sinai. When the people saw that Moses delayed in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us who will go before us, because this Moses, the man who brought us up from the land of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. Aaron replied to them, Take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings that were on their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, fashioned it with an engraving tool, and made it into an image of a calf. Then they said, Israel, these are your gods who brought you up from the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of it and made an announcement. There will be a festival to the Lord tomorrow. Early the next morning, they arose, offered burnt offerings, and presented fellowship offerings. The people sat down to eat and to drink and got up to party. The Lord spoke to Moses, go down at once. For your people, you brought up from the land of Egypt, have acted corruptly. They have quickly turned from the way I commanded them. They have made for themselves an image of a calf. They have bowed down to it, sacrificed to it, and said, Israel, these are your gods who brought you up from the land of Egypt. The Lord also said to Moses, I have seen this people, and they are indeed a stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone so that my anger can burn against them and I can destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. But Moses sought the favor of the Lord his God. Lord, why does your anger burn against your people, you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and a strong hand? Why should the Egyptians say he brought them out with an evil intent to kill them in the mountains and eliminate them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce anger and relent concerning this disaster planned for your people. Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. You swore to them by yourself and declared, I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of the sky and will give your offspring all this land that I have promised, and they will inherit it forever. So the Lord relented concerning the disaster he had said he would bring on his people. One of Jesus' most famous sermons is recorded for us in the Gospel of Matthew. That would, of course, be his Sermon on the Mount. Luke records for us a very similar sermon, which Luke tells us Jesus gave on a plane once. We're going to start reading today this, uh, this sermon, which is commonly called Jesus' Sermon on the Plain, which ha has a lot of similarity to Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Then, looking up at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, because the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are hungry now, because you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, because you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you, insult you, and slander your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy. Take note. Your reward is great in heaven, for this is the way their ancestors used to treat the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, 
for you have received your comfort. Woe to you who are now full, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are now laughing, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all people speak well of you, for this is the way their ancestors used to treat the false prophets. But I say to you who listen, love your enemies, do what is good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If anyone hits you on the cheek, offer the other also. And if anyone takes away your coat, don't hold back your shirt either. Give to everyone who asks you, and from someone who takes your things, don't ask for them back. Just as you want others to do for you, do the same for them. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. If you do what is good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do what is good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he is gracious to the ungrateful and evil. Be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Our writing for today comes from Martin Luther. Although I am unworthy and condemned man, my God has given me in Christ all the riches of righteousness and salvation without any merit on my part, out of pure free mercy, so that from now on I need nothing except faith which believes that this is true. Why should I not therefore freely, joyfully, with all my heart, and with an eager will do all things which I know are pleasing and acceptable to such a father who has overwhelmed me with his inestimable riches. I will therefore give myself as a Christ to my neighbor, just as Christ offered himself to me. I will do nothing in this life except what I see is necessary, profitable, and salutary to my neighbor, since through faith I have an abundance of all good things in Christ. Behold, from faith thus flow forth love and joy in the Lord, and from love a joyful, willing, and free mind that serves one's neighbor. He most freely and most willingly spends himself and all that he has, whether he wastes all on the thankless or whether he gains a reward. Therefore, if we recognize the great and precious things which are given us, as Paul says, our hearts will be filled by the Holy Spirit with the love which makes us free, joyful, almighty workers and conquerors over all tribulations, servants of our neighbors, and yet lords of all. Just as our neighbor is in need and lacks that in which we abound, so we were in need before God and lacked his mercy. Hence, as our Heavenly Father has in Christ freely come to our aid, we also ought freely to help our neighbor through our body and its works, and each one should become, as it were, a Christ to the other, that we may be Christ's to one another. And Christ may be the same in all, that is, that we may be truly Christians. Our hymn for today is a stanza from the hymn, Lord of all nations, grant me grace. Lord of all nations, grant me grace to love all people, every race. And in each person may I see my kindred, loved, redeemed by thee. And we pray, Almighty God, in your mercy, so guide the course of this world that we may forgive as we have been forgiven and joyfully serve you in godly peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you all so much for spending this time together with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.